Commentate. And hello, and good morning and good evening around the world. I'm Dina Moskowitz, and I am here as a host of Ecosystem Chronicles, also CEO of Partner Optimizer. And the goal of our podcast, our, our live webcast, is always talking about partner intelligence and partner, uh, partner data when it comes to the world of B2B technology partners. And so this is that forum where only our, our episodes really only hone in very specifically on best practices and new innovations when it comes to deploying data and AI and business intelligence in the world of channel partnerships and tech alliances and strategic alliances. So I am super excited and pumped today because our guest is actually one of the most well-respected and uh, what most accomplished and highly esteemed people in the channel. And uh, don't roll your eyes, Gabriella. But um, <laughs> and so Gabriella is someone who has been with Microsoft for probably 25 years and before that Adobe and has seen technology grow and, and partnerships and channel drive revenue throughout the world. And underneath her, she has experienced um, over 10 billion in direct annual revenues that has been driven through her and her team, but just as much over 40 billion in annual indirect revenue through channel partnerships, through more than 90,000 partners, which is almost inconceivable to think that you're at the, um, the head of that entire organization. And so your your insights and your expertise now are just so valuable. Um, she is now CEO of Gabriella Schuster and uh, LLC. And great name <laughs> because your brand is really already so well established. It makes perfect sense. And she is passionate and putting a lot of work into um, breaking through on gender equity and gender neutrality. And so uh, I, I love that as well. And she is a board member as well now of multiple tech companies, but don't keep bombarding her. I think she's already pretty well uh, allocated in, in what she's doing. And she's also got a show of her own called The Big Idea, which is getting thousands and thousands of, of listens and views, I think, on, on some of the major channels. And so stay tuned, you know, take a look for The Big Idea because her episodes are also very relevant to what's going on today. And so now folding in and, and welcome, Gabriella. Thank you so much for being here. I, I couldn't, you know, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and uh, how exciting it is for us to be talking about this topic right now at this I'm happy to be here this is a, a very um, relevant topic for everyone yep and so the topic actually is called choreographing your partners across the customer journey and what's so interesting about that topic for me and the angle that we're taking is that many times we're talking about you know the partnership leaders and the channel leaders are thinking about their channel as like a group as a set of partners who they need to use to get to market, to get to customers. But sometimes there's a, uh, in their jobs, there's an, an oversight, which is that it's all about the customer, right? And the partners that we're bringing into our channel are aligned or need to be aligned with who our ideal customers are because that's where the revenue is driven. That's where the value of your products and solutions are being provided. And so those partners are the segue, the conduit, the, um, you know, the portal to those customers, but they're also there to support the partners. And so, Gabriella, feel free to jump in and, and talk about it from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's very easy as a vendor to get caught up in what you need and what you're trying to accomplish. And you forget that you are part of an ecosystem and you need to understand where you fit into the customer's ecosystem or the customer's supply chain and what else they're doing at the moment that they are making a decision about your technology. Um, and, you know, it, when you do that, you have to think about, are you the, the lead product or the attached product, right? Are you um, mm -hmm. following on to someone else's sale um, and part of something bigger, or are you the, 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 the tip of the spear that really helps a customer break through in some particular technology area, and then you carry through um, a lot of other technologies. And um, 
you know, those are critical things to understand, as well as understanding who is your ideal customer? What segment are you looking at? What customer segment are you looking at? What vertical? What industry? Um, those are all important things for you to know before you even start thinking about a channel strategy, because you need to know who are you targeting? How are you getting to them? What does their ecosystem look like? And then where do you fit in? so that you then understand what can be your partnership strategy, both from a partnership with other SaaS B2B players um, who are in that ecosystem, and as well as with providers of that technology service. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, so if you wanna go to that um, first slide, where we talk about like there are different ways you can stratify your partners. And, um, and I think that these first three are ones that people often do, right? They think about who are my top partners, right? You wanna really know um, who's really making the impact for you and then what, what is a long tail? Um, and if you're just getting started, you actually only wanna focus on maybe two, three, four partners so that you understand um, what, what like all of this, you understand where you fit in, um, what your value proposition is, how you do partnership before you even get started. But once you're started, then you want to understand, like, who's the 80-20? Who's making the biggest impact for you? And what are you doing for them versus everyone else? Um, then you think about segmentation customer segmentation. Um, you're looking at small business, medium businesses, um, kind of that middle commercial um, small enterprise, or are you looking at very large enterprise customers um, and industries and verticals? So I think those are things that everybody um, typically thinks of when they think of partner stratification. What we're going to talk about is really at a, a finer detail about the customer. When you put the customer at the center, then you start thinking about the customer's life cycle and who is already embedded with the customer, who is already providing services to that customer. Because very often when you're thinking about building your partner ecosystem and, um, and your partnerships, it's important to know who's already talking to that customer. So if you wanna to move to the next slide, we can talk about what is that customer life cycle look like? And I know this can be an eye chart. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start in the middle with the customer. You put the customer at the center and then you think about what are the services that a customer needs in order to make technology decisions and take advantage of the technology itself. The very first thing is that someone is advising them, right? Sometimes this can be you, but very often it's not, right? So who is in there helping them to make technology decisions. At the lower end of the customer segmentation, um, it is going to be some sort of partner is in there helping them. At the very high end, typically, there's going to be someone in there, right? At the very high end, you can think about um, Accenture, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, right? Those are very often advisory um, partnerships where they are helping the customer to understand what is their strategic roadmap for adopting technology. At the low end, it can very often be a VAR or an MSP. Um, and then you think about now, how are you going to sell in your technology? Um, and what does that buying process look like to a customer? And, um, and then in the third stage, it's going to be building what does the customer need to build around the technology in order to make that work, right? In order to make the most of the technology platforms. Um, are they going to build applications? Do they already have um, their own custom applications that they need to connect into your systems? Um, where is their data reside? There's a whole lot of build questions that a customer has to do to kind of build out that whole platform. And there are a series of partners that actually do that delivery and work for the customer. Um, and then there's an adoption cycle. So who's helping them to manage that technology, to operate it, 
um, to make sure that one, you know, this is where you'd have things like the support end of that technology, but as well, you know, the managed services part of that technology, um, optimizing those services or optimizing um, hyperscale cloud or whatever it might be. So almost every technology requires the customer to have um, various touch points at these points in their life cycle. And what I have here is I've identified the specific kinds of services that um, outside suppliers will typically provide to the customer at each level of that. And then on the very edge of that circle are the kinds of um, things that are actually delivered, right? So if you aren't sure of understanding what are those things? When you think about advisory services, um, those are things like validating their RFP, um, building their digital transformation roadmap, um, helping them understand their own industry landscape and competitive position, um, and advising them on like TCO, right? When you move to sell kinds of activities, those are things like assessments, um, whether they are um, maybe skilling of their own internal staff. Um, what does the licensing look like? Um, how is that invoicing going to work across my organization? Maybe there's proof of concept, right? So it's those kinds of activities that are actually delivered. And then in the build stage, there are activities like migrations, technical plans, um, business cases, communication plans. Um, that have to be done across their organization. And when there's a when they're in the adoption phase, management phase of that, they're they're into cost optimization or change management, maybe deployment, um, end user support, et cetera. And so that's what I've done is i've I've shown you on the outer circle what are the kinds of services that a customer needs delivered to their organization that partners will typically deliver. Um, the reason you want to understand those and particularly think about them for your own technology and what your technology requires is because then um, you know the kinds of offerings you can create with your partners to go deliver that to customers, right? Um, very often, so at Microsoft, very often programs are associated with creating an assessment, a technology assessment that Microsoft will then put out into the partners to deliver to the customer. Um, and that assessment will lead to a proof of concept so that there's kinds of a templatized way of doing that that makes it much easier for the partner and much easier for Microsoft to advertise that to the customer um, and to fund partially or all of that to the customer. And so that's why it's important to understand what are those outer edge um, deliveries that you would have. So then you take a flip side role of that. When you go to the next slide, um, then it's an understanding of then as you're building partner practices with your partners, what is it that you need to provide to them in order to help them to build and grow their practice around your technology? Um, so at the beginning, you put the partner in the middle and you think about you need to help them sell your technology. You need to help them with building your technology. And then you have to help them with their go to market. And you are going to think about your partners in a very different way. Right. So very often when you think about your uh, building a channel, you are only thinking about the sell side. And you are then missing who is actually advising the customer, who is building things for the customer, and who is helping them with adoption and management. And so as you think about what is your partner ecosystem, you actually need to think across that life cycle to say, am I delivering services that do all of these things for the customer? And you can optimize your own organization through these partnerships because these customers have partners in their third parties doing those services for them. Even if they are, they have the biggest IT organization, they are already working with other 
partnerships, other suppliers who are in there helping them with those various things. And so from the low end to the high end of the customer, you need to kind of know what that ecosystem might look like so you can build out your own recruit profile of the partners that will deliver those services. And then you can think about how are you going to help them build their technical practices around your technology so that um, so they can be most effective. Now, all of this at the core um, has to do with how profitable are these services going to be for a partner? Um, they are not going to um, partner with you unless they see a path towards growth and profitability. How is it going to um, expand the services they deliver to their existing customers? How is it going to help them acquire new customers? Um, and so you need to also then think about what is the profitability profile? So if you move to the next slide, and I know I'm moving through these very fast, but I just really want to give you an overview before we jump into our discussion. So if you move to the next slide, um, what this is, is this is all about partner profitability. So how does a, how does a partner make money? Um, and you can think about what is their monetization opportunity across sell, manage, build, and advise across every stage of that customer life cycle. And the, they have an opportunity to make more money um, when they are bundling your service with other services that they are selling and delivering, right? So if they're just in selling, they are not actually going to make a lot of money, right? Um, there is the lowest margins associated with that. So a lot of um, B2B SaaS companies spend a lot of time, you know, hemming and hawing over their incentive program and their margin profile and how are they going to increase the margins for their partners. That is probably the least effective way of building a partner's profitability. Um, because at the end of the day, as the vendor, you're paying 100% of that, right? A customer isn't going to pay um, that to, for, they're not going to pay a partner for selling something to them. They expect that the partner's taken care of by you. Um, so you could, you could you know, give them 50 or 60% of the margin, and there's st still maybe just a drop in the bucket of their overall profitability profile. So then you think about managed services are next in line for helping them have some level of profitability. Um, in a managed service, the partner has an opportunity to make some money on selling. That would be from you. Some money in managing, that would be from the customer. And some money in advising, which could be a combination of what you pay them and what the um, customer would pay them for. Um, and then you can see on the um, the right side of that slide that you know typically 75% of the money paid to a partner is going to be paid by the customer. Then you would move down further into the packaging of a custom solution. Um, when a partner is providing a full packaged custom solution, so maybe they're taking your product and they are taking three or four other products and they're pulling that together into a unique offering for the customer, that gives them the opportunity to make money across the entire life cycle. Of course, then at that point, because it's custom, they take on the full burden of support, which is good for you, right? Because that lowers your costs. Um, and so all of this, when you can, when you can um, create an ecosystem of partnerships where they, you are just part of, you are OEM'd into um, somebody else's bundle, right? That gives you the opportunity to pay the least amount to the partner and have them make a, a very high level of profitability. So those are really good capabilities that you want to be able to provide. Um, and then when a partner can be responsible for a customer's entire technology roadmap um, for their entire digital transformation, that's the opportunity for them to be most profitable. Um, and typically the customer um, is going to bear the brunt of um, paying for those services and really enables you to be extended 
into the entire life cycle. So if you can be a platform that's for their digital transformation, if you can be managing the data that comes out of a digital transformation, um, those are opportunities for you to um, have the best, richest partnerships with an ecosystem um, where the partner has an opportunity for the highest levels of profitability. So hopefully this gives you some steps in how to think about um, more holistically what a partner ecosystem might look like. Um, when you're doing this, one of the things that you might wanna do is think about the various partners you have and how they already work together or could work together to provide these fuller, um, richer services for the customer. And that's where you might want to facilitate that partner to partner motion. So hopefully that gives you some sense. I'm going to, um, you know, bring it back to us, Dina, um, to yeah. talk a little bit more about this. No, I, I think it's great. These three slides just bring everything to such clarity and a conscious level that many times people are talking around, but never really catching the full you know, the full breadth of what it means to have a partner ecosystem. And one of the ways to look at it from another perspective is that, especially with most of our um, attendees, our viewers, our audience, uh, they're mostly leaders themselves, which means they oftentimes are the customer evaluating technology. And so if you take that level of insight and realize when you're buying technology, you know, what is going on to sell you that technology and implement and who are you trusting to get it through and what is the procurement process and the contracting process and how you have to collaborate internally, it helps you understand what your end customer is experiencing as well as where the partner is taking their role as well. So we have that insight to be able to look at that, but having this be spelled out for us the way you have has, is really helpful. I, I love it. I'm going to keep these next to me actually as I look at my strategic plan every quarter and make sure our team is focusing on our partnerships in the right way. Yeah, I mean, so very often what people do, the mistake they make is they take a very um, egocentric view of what right. they're going to do, right? Exactly. Um, and they just say, oh, I like that partner. I like this partner. But they're not thinking about who's already working together, who are your customers already working with, and how do you actually optimize your recruit motion around that? Exactly. Exactly. And to uh, they're oftentimes, like you mentioned, they're thinking in a, with tunnel vision. You know, our product is the center of the universe and that everything else you don't really realize matters, especially within a partner's world. And so it's a perfect segue to talk a little bit about how the partner optimizer platform and data has become so important to partner teams because we give you that ability to slice and dice all sorts of partner intelligence and partner data so that you can better understand which partners will serve different roles and which partners to invest in and also which partners to stay away from because they're not all good partners or not all partners are actually worth investing in. And so um, uh, this is just a fun slide that would hopefully make everyone hungry at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I, we have two, I mean, to your point, I think like this is where you think about like, you can find the information from your um, from from the partner optimizer on partners that are delivering managed services, technical support, um, who have application developers, um, and you you can actually start to then sort and and frame your partners into those various spaces of customer and. Mm -hmm. When you understand whether you're the lead or the attach associated with other technology purchases, um, then you know the APIs you need to build and, um, and you can look and see who are they partnered with and how do you then recruit their partners to actually put you into the mix. Exactly. Precisely. And, you know, where where our platform and our data mining kicks in is that it's very channel and partner specific so that it, we call it partner DNA. And we have these different four buckets of what comprises the DNA. And it's very, it's not just like some market code or some, you know, uh, are they an MSP, but are they a virtual CIO? Are they a system integrator? Are they a sec DevOps integrator? Are they a marketing integrator? You know, there are so many different things that a partner can be. And so you can look at company types, you can look at expertise, 
very specifically and granularly, which is something that oftentimes our, you know, the channel doesn't have access to. Now this brings it to the surface up front so that you can be much more insightful and intentional about who these partners are. And so you can see how big they are, how many partners, you know, how many, where they're servicing their customers. Um, you can see their ICP and you focused on this very, and it's very important. An ideal partner needs to have the same ideal customer. And without that, there is going to be friction or there's going to be no activation. That's why that 20% drive 80% because they're not aligned on the ideal customer in the first place. And so by being able to know that and evaluate that um, based upon how they self-report who they are to the world is a really helpful insight um, right, right from the get-go. And yeah, I mean, and, and that's exactly why, some, you know, an organization can be an ideal partner for one um, tech company and te te totally not for another because right. they're not focused on the si same ideal customer and they don't come in at the same um, moment of truth in the customer's decision making. Exactly. And, and sometimes that's just not obvious when you just bring on a general MSP. But to be able to dive in and explore that makes all that difference. Exactly. Well, so some of the other insights that we're able to bring in are, are they already working with competitors and how aligned are they to competitors, which is a very critical component, because if you are investing in a partner, but their wallet share is going to someone else, that is a very disappointing outcome, obviously. And it's something you don't want to have to report up to the C-suite. So being able to know and be intentional about, you know, can you still win them back or do you let them go uh, is, you know, in, important there as well, as well as who else is in the tech stack. And that was part of, you know, is the right partner has that competency in these other technologies that do integrate, that do provide the overall solution value is really important, especially in, you know, some of the most you know, pervasive in industries out there, retail and hospitality. They use all sorts of technology and applications, healthcare, same thing. And so your one solution, even if it's a cybersecurity solution that solves five pieces of the puzzle, there's still another 20 pieces of the puzzle that have to be solved. And so you have to have that insight as to what else that partner is good at or can add to their catalog, right? Yeah, I mean, no, no technology is, company is going to be delivering everything. I mean, if you think of any, you'd think, oh, well, Microsoft must, but it doesn't. I mean, that's why Microsoft relies on partnerships so much, because there are so many gaps in what a customer needs and the kinds of solutions and things that make those solutions just perfect for the customer. You need these partnerships to extend your solutions. Mm hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And then the final bucket is this additional qualifications like partner programs they belong to and certifications and competencies that they've actually invested in. And so that demonstrates to you as the, you know, as the vendor looking for partners, that these are the partners that have that commitment to the expertise that you care about, or maybe it's ones that you don't care about, you know, exactly. so that's critical too. So let's move on to the next, the next little slide here. Um, this is just a, I think there's another slide in here, actually. Yeah, this is an example just in Partner Optimizer's platform itself, how granular you can actually build that, curi uh, that, that query and decide it and, and find the partners that are aligning with you that you should invest in. And so you can see here that like just with partner company type alone, you can add in separate types of companies. You can say they must be those or they should be, or maybe they must not be those and they should not be those. And you can iterate what your ideal partner profile is based upon the type of partner in the, in the cycle that they could and should be. And that's a lot of fun because you can build one ideal partner profile that then can be triggered by the type of partner or the type of expertise or the credentials that they have. And it, the entire platform allows you to use the search query among the top, the buckets in the prior slide. And then it shows you here, well, how many partners match to a level of excellence all the way down to who's not a match. So if you have a set of partners that you're, are in your ecosystem already, it's going to tell you very quickly which ones not to invest in, but which ones are the ones to focus on. And so there's a very powerful efficiency as well as insights that you get 
by being able to use something with this level of partner intelligence in it. Absolutely. And then finally, you know, here's here's a profile also with real partner intelligence in it, because number one, you can see how it matched to what you were looking for. So with your intent, it's going to show you, you know, the business attributes that they are, you know, and how they represent themselves, as well as what matched to your specific query, which attributes you can actually see them here and how much they're matching and then what's missing from what your query is so that you also know, well, do they know enough? Do they have enough? Are the right, are they the right ones at this time? Or maybe they should be put somewhere else, or maybe, you know, they're not the right ones. So having the ability to see very clearly into an individual partner, not just as a group really allows you here to do so much more with that one partner, or maybe so much less with the partner if you were, you know, wasting spend on them. And happy to give you all a demo for anyone who's interested. And so here's a QR code if you are interested, but also here's a QR code to reach Gabriella and to connect with her on LinkedIn and to check out her uh, latest show, The Big Idea, and um, to follow everything she's doing. Because as you saw, she brings clarity to the future of partnerships. And, and anyone who's understanding and listening to this from a position of leadership should really be having those three core slides as part of your North Star and as, as you're planning your partner program. So Gabriella, thank you so much for being on. I think we went a little bit over the time frame, but it was amazing having you here. And I will be sharing this with everyone who's also been registered, who may not be attending today, but it'll be on LinkedIn Live as well. And I hope that you're willing to come on in the future and talk more as we continue to evolve everything. And you, you know, there's even more, I mean, there's so much we could be talking about. So. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, everyone. Our next episode comes up in a couple of weeks, actually with a really incredible guy, an experienced channel chief, senior VP of indirect channel at Market Star. His name is Ezra Hukano. He's also the former channel chief at Barracuda. And uh, we are partners with them and have lots of great stories to share about partner intelligence and partner data. And we'll be, you know, sending you more information on that. But mark your calendars if you can. And have a great July 4th week and holiday. And we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Gabriella.